right, cool. Uh, I'm going to talk about WordPress maintenance um, and just kind of run through a checklist of what you could be doing weekly, monthly, yearly, quarterly to kind of keep your website um, up to date. Some of it's technical, some of it's content orientated, um, but it's just a few things to kind of think about. Um, my business itself runs uh, this as a service around 80, 90 clients at the moment. So um, there's sort of a little bit of experience in there from what we do for most of our clients as well, um, both from a content point of view and like a basic technical point of view. Right, so essentially, like your site is, has been up since launch, it's performing well, uh, it's converting, it's capturing leads, um, you're securing sales. Um, there's always room for improvement, right? Um, but because of that, you're sort of happy to leave your website untouched. Um, you know, you may have 20 plugin updates up in the top left hand corner, but you're a little bit afraid to sort of make those changes, not knowing um, what that may do. So this talk is kind of just talking about that, right? So if you have a successful website at one point in time, there needs to be a fair amount of work that happens to keep that up to date. Um, so there's no real reason to inv uh, reinvent the wheel. Um, just follow a few tools. So is it worth it? Yes. So like I said, so your website could be running smoothly today, but it may not be tomorrow. So these could be through plugin updates. They could be through zero day uh, vulnerabilities that come out. There's been quite a few over the last month or two uh, around popular plugins that have, you know, a hundred thousand, a million installs that um, uh, either have changed completely their functionality and like have killed the plugin, the one I recommended only last month, um, the exact metrics um, SEO, uh, Google Analytics plugin changed from a version 5.4 to version 6. They completely rebuilt the plugin and it broke. Um, a bunch of websites um, stopped tracking it to Google Analytics and also was reporting the wrong analytics data um, on a lot of sites as well. So. It was a great plugin previously, but uh, since it was acquired, um, I wouldn't be using that one anymore. So it used to be called Google Dashboard, yeah, Exact Metrics is what it's called now, but Google, Google Analytics for something, anyway. Uh, Google Site Kit is what we'd recommend, and there's a talk about that from a couple of months ago. So back on to maintenance. So it, it could be running fine, um, but then it could all happen and change, like, at the end, you know, it could all just kind of fall apart. So maintenance is pretty boring. Um, it is kind of time consuming as well, but there's a few things that we can put in place uh, to make it work a little bit better. So I'll try and run through what I can and make it as exciting as possible, right? Um, so your website does need regular maintenance um, to build and retain your market value as well as your search ranking and user experience as well. So in addition to like the basic factors like st stability, security uh, and function as well. So this is a pretty exhaustive checklist. I'll, I'll run through kind of two to three points on, on each of these ones, but these are what I think we look after for most of our clients as well. So um, hosting backup, security, uh, downtime updates, uh, make sure you're monitoring it for malware. Um, what are you doing with comments and testing and databases um, and things like that. So we'll run, kind of run through one by one and I'll try and keep it as, as interesting as I can. Um, so WordPress hosting. Um, I did a talk about this, was it last month or the month before? Um, so the first thing I guess in, in all of this is making sure that you have a decent hosting provider. Um, some of them will actually offer WordPress updates or WordPress core updates, um, WP Engine, Kinsta, Flywheel, and a couple of the other managed hosting providers will do your core updates for you. Um, so you don't, you don't have to worry about those. So they do point updates essentially overnight. Uh, backups will all be done as well. Um, so you don't really have to worry about WordPress core. Uh, you just worry about your plugins and themes and things like that. If you don't have a hosting provider that will do this, um, then we'll run through um, a few backups and stuff. Right, cool. Making sure that we have backups. So, um, 
And, and probably more important than making sure that we have backups is testing that the backups work. I can't tell you how many times you go and try and use a backup. Nobody's actually tested to see whether or not it works and your backups are all failed. Um, so either making a backup and then testing it on local, uh, any type of local server or merging it to a staging, but just making sure from time to time that your backups are actually working. So with managed hosting providers, you can get one-click backup solutions as well. Um, so it means before you're going to do any, any point updates or any core updates, plugin updates, you'll just kind of click on that one-click backup and make sure it has it. So if anything goes wrong, you can restore in you know, a matter of minutes. There are some free plugins like Updraft Plus and BackWP Up. So those will essentially run for free um, to update directly to your server. Uh, it's better than nothing, but again, if you can't operate your server or can't get access to your server, uh, those backups are not really that useful at all. So I'd recommend at least moving them off to a third-party server somewhere, somewhere like um, a Dropbox or a um, Google Cloud or something like that uh, account, Google Drive account. Or you can use a backup solution like Blog Vault or Manage WP. Um, who I'll be talking about a little bit because they kind of cover off a lot of this stuff. Um, unfortunately, hackers love WordPress, right? So it was like the back in the old days when Windows XP sort of had 99% of the market share, um, maybe a little bit less, but. Um, it was sort of the target market, right, for, for a lot of these hacks. So because it powers so much of the, the internet, 35%, um, that's, it's just a big target for it. So there's some very basic things that you can follow, and, and a lot of that stuff is on the WordPress uh, developer guides. So, you know, secure passwords, making sure you updated your plugins and things. But um, most of these hacks are just down to bots. So even though if you have 35 visitors on your site per week, it's really got nothing to do with uh, the size of your site. It's about, they're all automated bot, bot attacks. So you can consider website firewalls like Cloudflare or Securi. Um, those firewalls will sit in front of your website. So from your, from your DNS, uh, you'll change your name service to Cloudflare or Securi. Um, and that will help protect the traffic before it actually gets to your website. Um, if you are using WordPress plugin solutions like WordPress, there's a security one as well, WP Server, I think Security, those ones will essentially run on your server. So if you're getting a lot of traffic, um, it may not actually protect you because you'll be getting that traffic and it'll be running PHP, it'll be running your MySQL, so it can actually bring the website down. So depending on the type of hack or the type of attack that you're on, I try uh, and at least get out in front of it before it actually gets to the server, if at all possible. So Cloudflare have a free um, account and security is about $200 per year, um, but they do, um, they'll do your free security uh, restore uh, and, and fix if you do get hacked as well. Then there's a, a 7G firewall. So this is um, by a company called Perishable Press. Um, there's been many variations of it, but the 7G one has just come out of beta in the last couple of months. Essentially, it's for Apache and it's HD access rules. So you can download it, chuck it into HD access, and it will stop a lot of bad bot traffic uh, and some of your directories and things like that it can protect. So have a look at that. It's about 12 kilobytes compressed. So um, it's pretty reasonable to be adding to your server um, and keeping that one up to date. Right, so downtime monitoring as well, right? So uh, making sure that your website is actually online when you, when you need it to be, especially for e-commerce um, providers or marketing if you're sending out a big email campaign or something like that. Um, so what would happen to the business if you sent out uh, a blast to 10 to 15,000 people and they hit your website and nothing happens. Um, it's unavailable. So you can do things like Uptime Robot, which is a free product, uh, Fresh Ping as well, which is a free product. And what they would do is that every five minutes, 10 minutes on the free account, it will ping your website to make sure it's operational. And then, you know, 
you can monitor that. It will send you an email or a Slack message or something like that if your website's not operational. Um, there are a couple of tweaks that you can do on that because sometimes your website may be down but still returning uh, a ping, so a, a 200 result. Uh, so you can do things like checking for copyright in the footer, so it checks for a little piece of text on your footer, so therefore you know that it's, it's rendered the whole page to the footer, and that's a good idea as well, rather than just pinging to see whether or not the website's up, because it could still be broken, uh, although it's up. You can use cloud services like Pingdom, ManageWP, or BlogVault. They offer that as part of their service as well. So if you are subscribed to any of those, um, then they will include that in their service as well. Uh, WordPress updates. So, you know, pretty standard stuff here. Make sure that you have a backup first um, and check that that backup works from time to time. Um, perform those updates on a staging server, if at all possible. So using managed hosting providers, you can spin up staging sites pretty easily. Perform those tests that way. Um, and then once they, they work, then you can move them back to the live server. So if possible, read uh, plugin change logs, especially um, for major version changes. So from 5.1 to 5.2, it's probably a small bug fix here and there. Um, but from 5 to 6, it could be a complete rebuild of the product. So for something like Word, uh, WooCommerce 4, um, which came out last week, it's not actually backwards compatible. So there will be uh, features and functionality that could break by just hitting that update button. So making sure that you're doing those updates first on a staging server and then actually reading about what those changes are rather than just hitting the, uh, the update button. Um, so we do uh, it in this process first. So we'll back up first, then we'll update WordPress. Uh, we'll back up again, we'll update plugins one by one, uh, and then check the site after every plugin update, and then we'll update the themes last as well. Um, and you can use a cloud service like ManageWP uh, to do all that for you. Um, ManageWP and BlogVote will both do re uh, revision testing, uh, regression testing, sorry, visual re regression testing to make sure that the, they take a screenshot of the website, they run the update, make sure the screenshot looks the same, uh, and then it will proceed with the next update. So monitoring your SEO, right? So how is your website performing? Um, and we, we've given a couple of talks on this recently. Um, Robert's gone through Google Analytics and monitoring that traffic as well as Search Console uh, to monitoring your keywords. If you are looking for a free tool, um, then you can look at Ubersuggest, which is the tool by Neil Patel, um, which will allow you to monitor keywords and analyze competitors and things like that. They have a paid plan, which is pretty reasonable um, at $10 a month compared to some of the other SEO uh, services out there. So you can chuck in, you know, your 20, 30 keywords and it'll analyze it against all of your traffic. Uh, and then you can chuck in, you know, five of your competitors and see how you rank uh, towards those. I think the free plan will allow for one to two competitors and I think 30 keywords. So it's still a pretty decent product just for free. And you can use a cloud service like ManageWP for your reporting as well. Um, and that will essentially track every page of your website against the keywords that you have uh, and then tell you how they're ranking each week or each month. So you might go up or down one spot. Um, as you know, Google is moving everything further and further down um, the listing pages. So malware scans as well. So has your website been hacked? There's a few services that offer this as well. So WordPress plugins are one, so WordPress, uh, WordFence, Security Site Check, um, and WP Server. There's more, but these are the kind of main ones that we use. They'll periodically scan your website uh, for malware. Things like WordFence and, and Security Site Check will check your uh, website against change logs in the WordPress repository, as well as you know your core changes as well. So if people are adding errored files or something like that into your your site directories into your you know public HTML directories or something like that, then they'll fly up here. You can delete them directly from the plugins as well. So managed WordPress host will generally remove that malware for free, either restoring a backup or they'll recover that hack for you, depending on the company. 
Um, and then you can use uh, a security service like ManageWP for reporting as well. So that'll check against Norton and, if, and security site check and about four or five other systems and report back to you either daily, uh, weekly or monthly, depending on what you want. Uh, ManageWP will also let you know if there's any zero day um, plugin vulnerabilities um, that you can address as well. Or you can check out the a vulnerability database. Um, do we even need comments anymore? I mean, most people are not really running blogs, or if you are running a blog, you're probably getting one real comment a week, maybe. Um, so we typically turn it off for, for most. Uh, we may integrate Facebook or something like Discuss, but generally we'll turn it off and just save the database. Uh, if you are using it, make sure that you're moderating those comments weekly and deleting spam comments, um, especially removing links. Uh, we had a client just recently that couldn't get any Facebook ads on because she was approving comments that were spam comments, but uh, they were kind of hard to, to distinguish that they were spam, but they were redirecting links, so they had a decent URL but it was redirecting to sort of spam links after that. So Facebook wasn't a big fan of that. Um, so it took us a while to kind of find uh, what was happening out here. So again, you can use a cloud service like ManageWP to manage um, removing and deleting um, all, these, uh, all these comments. And then making sure that you're testing your website as well. So how's your website performing? Um, and testing your website and desktop and mobile devices as well uh, and in popular browsers so due to software updates so mac um, windows or any sort of browser software that could be updated firefox new versions chrome new versions um, make sure that you're testing your website not just in the browser that you use all the time especially the browser that comes up in your analytics that people use all the time and especially at the screen resolution that people use as well. I can't tell you the amount of time that people check websites on a 27 inch iMac and think it looks weird at full screen, but uh, making sure that you're testing on your most popular browser sizes as well. Um, cleaning your database. So um, this can be done a number of ways. It can be done directly through PHP My Admin or whatever database tool that you'd like to use. Um, but there's a lot of stuff that WordPress can add to the database which isn't necessarily needed. Um, so you can use spam, remove spam comments. Uh, sometimes, depending on the plugin, if you uninstall it, it may leave five to ten tables uh, in the back end as well, which will, may never be used again. While they won't be called all the time, um, depending on what other plugins you may have, it could be searching throughout that data every time you make a request. So. Um, you can do that as well, um, and things like limiting post revisions. So by default, WordPress will keep a, a revision of everything that you do on the website. So if you change the title, you change any content, you can roll back any of those changes. Um, you probably don't need you know, 90 days worth of post changes for one post. So we like to limit it uh, ourselves to about seven days. Uh, and there's some code in the repository that you can uh, check out for that as well for limiting post revisions. Uh, just a bit of code you add to WP config to limit those revisions. A lot of times we just uh, remove them completely because we have daily backups uh, and that sort of works for us. You can use WP Rocket, WP Optimize or WP Sweep um, to perform that regular maintenance as well. So WP Rocket's a paid caching plugin that runs some um, uh, database automations as well, cleaning up tables and transients and things. WP optimizes directly for databases, but they now have caching built into it. And WP sweep will pretty much go through um, all your databases and, and clean that up as well. Again, before you do anything to the database, make sure you have a backup. All right, so clean your users. So Generally, when we build sites as well, we'll build you know one to two admin accounts for the clients, and then we'll build uh, sort of like an advanced editor account. So editors that have a few more position, uh, permissions. But I can't tell you how many times I've gone into a website and found sort of 20 admin accounts of old developers and, and people that are nowhere near the business anymore. If you don't want to delete those users, you can downgrade them um, to a subscriber 
or if you do delete them, make sure that you're um, migrating that data across from that deleted user to somebody else. Um, I had a client try and clean up their website recently. They deleted about 10 users but didn't remap all the content, so lost half of their website at the same time. So we did have backups and restored that, but if you are looking at cleaning up these users, then focus on the, the people with admin permissions first and enforce some two-factor authentication and secure passwords if you can as well. So there's uh, Microsoft Authenticator or Google uh, Authenticator as well, which you can use as a basic uh, two-factor authentication, which is pretty simple, especially for your admin users. Um, checking your broken links as well. So um, depending on the age of your site, you've probably got a whole bunch of broken links. So um, that may be linking out to third-party sites. That may be your, you know, your own internal links that you've changed. Um, but things like that can really hinder your SEO because uh, your sort of Google Bing juice, um, once they check your website, you'll find you know, X amount of broken links. The spider will follow each of those links, um, and the more of those sort of broken ones you have, the less chance that you have for uh, ranking the rest of your site. So making those um, connected is a good idea. So you can use a plugin called the Broken Link Checker. It's by Managed WP, but it is very sort of heavy because it runs your, you know, runs through the database every time someone loads up a page. So you can use that sparingly or use it on a staging site or from time to time. There's a few SaaS services as well. That Dead Link Checker um, is a decent one. And they do have paid plans as well. Um, so there's some limits that apply on that, but um, that's a good one to kind of check through. Uh, Google Search Console as well is a good one um, to sort of think about how your site is performing. Um, so check that data once a month with Google Site Kit. You can chuck that into your WordPress admin so you don't have to bother logging in. Uh, and it will give you data on your most popular pages, queries, you know, devices and things. Um, and make sure that your sitemap is actually linked in and check any errors with your structured data, so your schema uh, data. Google's, I think, moving to I think about 80% of, of sites are now mobile first. Uh, linked as well, so make sure that you're testing it on mobile. Uh, unused themes as well, so again, like we don't really need 2010 installed anymore unless we're actively using it. Uh, WordPress, I think, still does install uh, the most recent version uh, on any kind of any major updates. So if you do have any of these old versions, you don't really need them anymore. I always try and keep one default theme just for testing, but the rest are all delete, deleted. So um, Edmund's going to run through child and parent themes uh, in a little bit, but try and keep your active child theme uh, and keep your parent theme in there as well, then kind of delete everything else besides 2020, unless you have another favorite um, 2013 or something like that. Um, theme that you like to roll back to. Obviously, if you're using one of the WordPress core themes as a parent theme, then don't delete that. Um, but try and clean that up as much as possible. Um, mainly because if there are vulnerabilities in these themes, uh, then you don't want that, especially if you're not using it or, act or being active. And the same applies with plugins as well. So to get your website loading time down, uh, you can test your website on GT Metrics or Pingdom. Um, there's also web, web page speed test is another decent one that'll run three or four checks um, and give you a waterfall of, of how everything's loading. Um, just be wary that like t a top score doesn't necessarily mean a fast site. So you may get a hundred or an A grade um, that doesn't necessarily mean it's better than anything else. Uh, they are just recommendations that people provide. Uh, some things you have no control over. So if you're linking to analytics scripts, for example, or tracking scripts on third-party sites, there's no way you can control those headers. So uh, do as much as you can. Uh, but you know things like the New York Times uh, and other large media sites don't rank very well uh, on these recommendations, but they still load up nice and fast. So. It's better to have a better server than a rank uh, of, you know, a uh, hundred grade or an A grade. 
and then review your setup as well. So um, whether or not this is annually, quarterly, or sort of half yearly, um, running through your, your setup just to see whether or not you still need anything anymore. Um, if you bought something on AppSumo and installed it and never used it again, um, then kind of review that as well. So there may be plugins, there may be alternatives to those plugins, so it's a good idea to check, look at those. There may be different themes. You probably don't really want to change your theme uh, too often, depending on sort of how your website's been built. And then review your hosting company as well. So if your hosting company still doesn't offer free SSL, then it's probably time to look at moving. Um, and then third-party services as well. So if you do have any analytics scripts or anything like that that you're not really using anymore, you put hot jar tracking on it uh, and then never actually logged into it. Things like that you can review uh, and get rid of. And then reviewing your content. So this is going through kind of page by page um, or at least your most popular content page by page, checking your opt-ins, checking your call to actions, does it still fit with your target audience and have a bit of a content review, uh, making sure that uh, everything's still tracked, your goals are being set, your event tracking is still working. Uh, check through your content that gets the most likes and shares and then look at sort of building more content around those pillars and then determine what content sort of commands the highest time. So um, highest time on site and the lowest bounce rate and things like that um, for your conversions. So that's it. Um, so it's crucial to kind of carry out this. There's a lot of stuff that we went through there. Um, but most of these tips will save you a lot of time. You can shortcut a lot of it by using, you know, solutions like SaaS solutions like Managed WP, which is a GoDaddy product now um, that will kind of manage all that for you. Um, they have paid and free plans, uh, and the same as Blog Vault as well. Um, but yes, yeah, so you can spend your time in more productive work. But that's about it, really, unless we have any questions. Uh, dev plugins that does all of these. Yep. Uh, what are your thoughts? So I used them a while ago, and to be honest, I thought a lot of their code was junk about sort of six, seven years ago. I've tested a couple of plugins. I tested their form plugin just recently, and I really like it. So I think their plugin suite has come a long way. I haven't used it personally, um, but I think their subscription model uh, is a lot better than it used to be and their, their code from what I've seen. But yeah, anything that saves you time. There's also main WP. Um, that's another one which you install on your an own separate WordPress install. You can do it locally, and that will update your websites for you as well. I'm using WP. Yeah, you used to be able to buy the plugins one by one previously. Now it's yeah, it's all subscription now, yeah. The guy had a bad name when he started Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was all a bit dodgy, but um yeah. Um a developer of mine just started working on the the uh the th uh the form plugin Forminator. Uh and we run through that, it, it actually runs really well, so just a problem that you have to buy everything to use one. There's a theme review plugin, but not really. Like, uh, I think there's a theme test mode plugin, but I haven't used it in a long time. What I would mainly do is just try and spin up a staging server, if at all possible. Um, if you're running a backup, you could use local by Flywheel or MAMP, WAMP. Um, spin up a local install, download your, you know, your current website, and then test it locally. That's what I would do first. Um, I think any of those plugins essentially uh, would be a stopgap measure anyway. Um, yeah, so. I'd be wary of doing it on a live server, just in case. Yeah, it is. <coughs> I use one of them. 
There is one, right? Yeah, uh, theme test or test theme or something. Let me, let me find it. Yeah, through the theme itself. Yeah, um, I have. So I had a one. I had a client that we didn't build, but we took over a site. Um, and for some reason, they're running an old version of Divi, and they kind of have to at the moment, just because for some reason every time we upgrade it, it breaks the whole front end display uh, of the website. Even though we've tried to rebuild it, it's just not possible. So we've have to keep that in an old version, and it kind of gets hacked once a week. Um, at the moment, we're just monitoring and restoring. That's kind of the only thing we can do at the moment. Uh, I've got another client uh, who has 10 websites. It was a custom theme uh, which was built uh, 10 different versions of that same theme, uh, which is a disaster. We're actually rebuilding it, thankfully, um, on a multi-site. But yeah, that gets hacked probably once a month those as well. Um, that's just us trying to close down somebody else's bugs. Um, so it actually worked out easier for us to discount some of the development package to ease us time on maintenance uh, going forward for re rebuilding a site. But yeah, that's the kind of main hacks essentially through themes and through plugins. Um, yeah, there's a lot of bad code out there in terms of not escaping URLs and, and inputs and things like that, generally. So what about buying themes online? Like, I used to buy them in Forest. Yep. And they used to provide, like, pull-up links. And a few years later, like, no. Yeah. Them, now they offer six months. I think out of the box, they'll give you six months. Uh, you can actually still get it, it's just not an automatic update. So if you go and download the theme and re-upload it, you still have access, but you can't plug in your, you know, your site key or whatever into the Envato plugin and update it automatically. Again, with any of those marketplaces, it's hard to tell. Generally, the most popular themes would be okay, but things like Slider Revolution uh, and Visual Composer have both had a lot of big bugs. Um, over the years, so the things I'd kind of steer away from if possible. They're generally patched relatively quickly, but there's been a lot of problems with those, uh, in, in particular those two. So look for a reputable developer and something that's been updated as well. So if you're looking at the change log of a plugin it's been, or a theme and it's been updated once in the last year, I probably wouldn't worry about it. Um, for some plugins it doesn't really make any sense to update it because they just work all the time. Things like disable comments, like that plugin's just going to work, it's not really going to need any core updates, so while it, they will refresh it from time to time so it gets, doesn't get pulled from the repo, um, sometimes it doesn't warrant any current, uh, any updates. Is there a service that you can use to scan the code for WordPress specifically? There's WordPress theme review, but that's not going to uh, scan it for any malicious code. It's just going to code it for uh, scan it for theme like standards. So not really, no. Um, if you weren't using multi-site, then yeah, you would need to optimize that theme 10 times. Or optimize it once uh, from, the, from a code point of view and then upload it 10 times. If you're using multi-site, then you can essentially install it once and it'll propagate against all the 10 sites. Because you mentioned Cloudflare, I've used Cloudflare for a while, but yep. how do we use like, some of the, you have like JavaScripts and everything that you can use so that the site flows faster, right? Um, so it really depends on the theme that's being built, uh, whether or not you're using a front end. Uh, 
front-end API for that. For using Cloudflare, is more to get out in front. So Cloudflare will do optimization. So it'll minify your content. It'll minify uh, your JavaScript, your CSS, and things like that at the server level, well, sort of at the CDN level. It'll also distribute your information across their network as well. So CDNs, unless you like, have a wide global audience, are not really going to save you that much more time. It'd be better to invest your money in, in a faster server than a global CDN, unless you're talking to Brazil and US, Singapore and Australia all at the same time. They're all important for you. Um, so Cloudflare will kind of bridge that gap. Um, and if people are using you know, DNS like 1.1.1.1, um, then that's going to be faster generally because it's all cached on their own system. But in terms of applying sort of JavaScript updates across a whole network of site, you can do it on Cloudflare as long as all 10 sites are in. Um, but it's, again, one, one site by one. Yeah, if you're looking at a network, then... Uh, is it safe, like, because there are so many, you know, like, the, the code is being used in all these types of... Uh, open source doesn't necessarily mean security. Um, it means that it can be patched by anyone at the same time as well. So, again, it really depends on the theme that you're using. Um, most themes, if they're well-coded and well-developed, you shouldn't really have any security issues with the theme itself. It would generally be about integrations with Customizer because that's where you would get your content in, or if you're using a page builder, um, it would be related to that for the most part, or plugins. Cool, any more? All right, I'll pass over to Edmund who's gonna give us a chat 